Hi, I'm Lisa Prather, and welcome to The Voice of Health with our host, Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where lives are changed every day through the natural approach to health care. This week, we're talking about how to fight the flu. Flu season runs from December to February? Well, that's the height of it. It can actually start as early as October. Well, let's talk about the flu. Is that the same thing as influenza? It is. Influenza is more of the proper term, but the flu is certainly a good, what everybody kind of knows. And then the big thing on the flu is, how do I know that I have the flu? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go back. I like saying influenza. You like saying influenza? Huh? Like lasagna. It's an Italian version of flu. <laughs> <laughs> influenza, it, seems, it sounds like, you know, it seems a like city it's a in Italy. Cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> That you don't want to go to because you might get the flu. (laughs) But, yeah, let's go over the symptoms of the flu. All right. The big thing is people are always wondering, you know, do I have the flu or do I have a cold? Because the influenza, as you like to call it, Uh is an upper respiratory disease. So Uh it's transmitted through the air. That's why it's so contagious. As a matter of fact, someone who has the flu and sneezes, Mm -hmm. you can be six feet away and still catch it. Wow. So it's some you, you just backed up away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the flu. <laughs> but you got big sneezes. No, I got big sneezes, yeah. My, mine are 10 feet away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Your sneezes make me, you know, jump well, hit the ceiling. <laughs> you, you can also get it uh, on doorknobs and other different types of, you know, because you can actually, somebody can have the flu and sneeze in their hands and then open up the door. Oh, that's... That's a nice picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, not only do you have to be careful of being around people with the flu, but where people who had the flu might have been in contact with. Mm-hmm. And then you get in contact with it and either rub your eyes or kind of wipe your face, itch or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can actually catch it that way, too. So it's something that's easily transmittable. That's why it spreads so quickly. So how do you know if you have the flu or the cold? Oh, uh, now, the biggest thing is they're both upper respiratory, but the cold kind of comes on gradually. Okay. It's more of a stuffy sinuses, those types of things are more involved with the cold. The flu, the way that you can tell that, because you have the same symptoms, you have the cough, you can have a sore throat, stuffy nose. But the big thing is the flu kind of hits you all at once. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that, I was hit by a freight train type of thing, and you have the overall pains and muscle aches, you have higher fever. So it's a much more dramatic type of a symptomatology than it is with the cold. Do they last about the same? Well, that varies. It's not as intense for the cold, but it depends on exactly, because the cold covers quite a few different types of viruses. Mm -hmm. So, yes, they can actually last about the same length of time. Now, interestingly enough on the flu is that you can actually go a day, maybe two days, uh, before you actually start to show symptoms, and you can be contagious. Those you know, During those two days. During those two days. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually your contagious period lasts about seven days, but children can actually be contagious even longer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, watching out, uh, one of the big things when they had the big pandemics of the flu, mm-hmm. the way that they actually got that under control is that one of the things is they canceled all the big gatherings, events, events, all Mm -hmm. that type of thing. Where can you really, you know, get the flu transferred through? I mean, schools are a wonderful type of way to do that, Mm -hmm. especially (laughs) when you have large numbers and uh, you're in a confined area. Sporting events is a great way to uh, spread the uh, flu. Anywhere that there's large numbers of people, all you need is one to really start spreading. I'd still throw the Colts game. Not stopping so, me. So you're going to, yeah, you're going to, you're, you're going to brave it. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm just keep my immune system strong, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, what is meant by the flu season? Well, the flu season, interestingly enough, one of the things that they've always been interested in is that it's a wintertime type of a event. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you don't really have the flu going through the summer. It's, like I said, the height of it is December through February. Why is that? There have been a lot of theories, but no one's actually proven it. Mm -hmm. But the cold weather does seem to be making a difference. One of the ways that they actually look at it is the flu season is just opposite in the southern hemisphere as it is in the northern hemisphere. 
Hmm. So, so does Florida have the same flu season we do? Uh, Florida is in the northern hemisphere, so okay. yes. <laughs> How easy is it to catch the flu? The flu is as easy as breathing. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is get some water droplets from somebody who sneezed, breathe it in, and you've got the flu. Mm -hmm. Now, there is your own ability to actually fight it off. Mm -hmm. So you have some people who will be exposed to the flu and not get it, and some people who will. And it also depends on your own immune system. Uh, one of the things that people who are more at risk are Native Americans. Hmm, why is that? Because the flu was not something that they had here. Hmm. We brought to them. We brought it to them. So when you're talking about Native American Indians, they were actually much more susceptible to the flu pandemics that went through and had a higher death rate. Mm -hmm. So Still. Actually still is going hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So we have inherited from our ancestors the ability to actually fight off the flu. One of the things that occurred with the Spanish flu in 1918 mm -hmm. was that it was a brand new flu virus. What they had figured out, and they actually were able to trace it and figure out, which I won't go into detail on, mm. on all the uh, chemical changes. I've already had my like geography that. lesson. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't want to completely bore all the, uh, uh, the people lesson. out here. Right? Oh, there's yeah, probably yeah, a yeah. lot of people out there that can follow you, but uh, yeah. I'm not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but the H1N1, which was the, uh, the Spanish flu, mm -hmm. which is actually a very common flu that goes around even nowadays, was a brand new variant. And it hit people, and the reason it was so devastating, I mean, there was in a lot of places in the world where 10% of the population died. Mm. So it was a, an incredible amount of, of panic at that time. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, my uh, grandmother, her first husband, actually died in, in the mm. Spanish flu. Okay. She had it, her son had it. They both survived, but the husband actually died. So th everybody knew someone who had died in the Spanish flu during that time. And a uh, matter of fact, they were stating that if it had gone another week to two weeks, that uh, they felt that a lot of, of chaos would have occurred. A lot of the governments would have just shut down. Wow. So and there have been recorded times where that has occurred and there has been a spread of the flu and actually wiped out civilizations because and that, of it. And, you know, that wasn't that long ago. It really wasn't that long ago. And they actually expect a major new flu strain to come through about every 100 years. Mm hmm and Dr. Prather, what does the flu season for this year look like so far? Uh, they are predicting a much worse uh, flu season this year than last year. So 2019? 2019 to 2020, 2020 was uh, pretty severe uh, as they were looking at it in the southern hemisphere. Mm -hmm. So if this follows the same pattern as it did uh, elsewhere, uh, that this is actually supposed to be a worse flu season than uh, than we've had for quite a while. What were last year's numbers? Well, last year's numbers, there was about 37 to 43 million people had the flu in the U.S. last year. Uh, there was somewhere between 37,000 and 60,000 deaths associated with the uh, flu disease. Mm, just last year. And just last year. So it, it is a very serious problem, and, you know, we need to take it seriously. Uh, but uh, it, it, it is actually supposed to be worse this year than it was last year. Mm. And what months did it extend from last well, year? Last year, it pretty well started about October 1st and went through May 4th, uh, which is a little bit longer than normal. Mm -hmm. uh, and the flu season has already started. Uh, there has been a uh, some deaths associated with it, and it is starting to spread through the United States. Okay. When we come back, let's talk about, should I get the flu shot? Good question. You can win a free 60-minute massage in a relaxing spa at the Prather Practice. Each month, we have a drawing to give away a free massage to one of our lucky Facebook and Twitter fans. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health wellness tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. 
what is the difference between disease care and structure function care with reading blood work? And if we have a listener that's a new listener with our show, the Prather practice, we practice structure function care. Yeah, the uh, FDA divides all care into two different categories. One disease care model, which is based on pharmaceuticals and symptomatology, and then the structure function care in which you're dealing with homeostasis. You're uh, achieving homeostasis in the body. And homeostasis is health. Homeostasis is balance. Mm -hmm. And that homeostasis, if the body's able to achieve balance in homeostasis, then that is the definition of health. So really we're health doctors. We improve the health of the individuals. We don't treat disease. And when you're interpreting blood work, those are two different ways of looking at it which is a a new paradigm for those who are in the disease care. They don't oftentimes understand. It takes a while to change their whole paradigm Mm -hmm. on the interpretation. Basically, what they're looking for in the blood work is when you qualify for getting a pharmaceutical. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is to look for what we need to do to achieve a perfect health. And so two different types of models, two different types of ways of looking at it, and getting that model into people's brains is, is a new paradigm. And it's a new paradigm within the healthcare system. So that's where we approach our model from. I mean, that's one of the reasons I have the radio program. So we're trying to educate and get the word out there because mm-hmm. this is a new paradigm that is hard for people to understand. Mm-hmm. Very important. And you talk about how we need both the structure function care and the disease care model. Correct. A perfect balance on that is 80% of the health care should be structure function based, 20% should be disease care model. Mm -hmm. Because we do refer out for pharmaceuticals, we refer out for surgeries. There are times where the body requires those. We're not against those things at all. It's just that we need a balance and we need the two groups to work together. Mm-hmm. One of the things is that there's been a very much of a uh, antagonism between the two groups, and which there surely shouldn't be. Uh, when we find the best results in the healthcare system is when the two groups are actually working together for the good and, and the benefit of the patient. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Soon the bells will start. And the thing that will make them ring is the carol that you sing right within your heart. You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. We're talking about flu, and it's that time again. Dr. Prather, so let's talk about vaccinations, because vaccinations have to match, right, that flu. It does. So should people get a flu shot? Of course, the Center of Disease Control is saying yes. The big problem with the flu is it is a virus that shifts very quickly. Mm -hmm. The mechanism of the the virus is the virus can't actually reproduce on its own. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it comes inside your body, goes inside your cell, and then it fools the body into replicating the virus for it. So Uh we are essential to help the the virus to reproduce. So it uses our transcription method to actually reproduce more viruses. Okay. So there's sort of a race going on with the virus. As we adapt to that so that we recognize it and keep it from doing that, it tries to shift its genetic material so it can fool us, so it can actually make it. So, yeah, I know, it's shifty. So there's a genetic drift and a genetic shift. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever there's a genetic shift, that's usually when we get a pandemic because no one actually has the ability to fight it Mm -hmm. because it's changed so dramatically. Usually it's borrowed other genetic material from other critters and and figured out how to really get us good. Mm, It's evil. Uh, Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Just trying to keep around. Sounds like a movie. 
And then there's something called a genetic drift, where it just changes a little bit on its own, so we don't recognize it. Well, we've talked in the past about how the flu shot is changed annually, you know, to try and predict the most common strain of the virus. Um, some years they've missed the mark. How close is this year's flu shot to the 2019-2020 flu season? At this point, uh, they're pretty positive about it. Mm -hmm. We don't really know yet because uh, if you understand uh, one flu season, you only understand one flu season. <laughs> you don't understand them all, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, because it's totally different from year to year, and, and you're basically shooting at a moving target. So, uh, And they actually have a competition. This is one of the funny things. Is the CDC has a competition on who can get the closest to the prediction, and then uh, they reward the contract to whoever gets, you know, consistently the oh, best. Oh, that's what they get, the they reward right, the con right. next so year's it's, contract. It's kind of like a... Uh, like uh, Las Vegas uh, betting type of thing uh, on what's going on. Uh, hopefully uh -huh. it's a very scientific one, but uh, last year uh, it, we completely missed it. So uh -huh. it was pretty well worthless. Missed uh, the mark. Missed the mark. So if you got the flu vaccine last year, uh, you got nowhere close to it. Uh -huh. uh, on a good year, uh, if you take all the years and you put them together, there's about a 40% accuracy rate on the flu. So For all you're, the years. Yeah, you're, you're kind of shooting about a 40%. So it's good to understand that mm -hmm. as you're going into it. So you have about a 40% chance of hitting the mark. Now, at this year, they're very positive about it at this point. Mm -hmm. So they think they've got it. We don't know yet, but uh, we'll keep, keep our fingers crossed, and hopefully we're, we're on target. <laughs> Oh, so what, um, let's talk about um, this year's uh, flu. Any updates or on the vaccines? Well, uh, you know, there's, there's all sorts of different types of, uh, of flus out there. Uh, what they're hitting is a, a certain strain of H1N1. And uh, the big one, the one that actually really makes people sick is the H3N2. People get sicker with that. And we didn't even expect it to be there last year. But uh, it, it did show up and became a real problem. And it was a real problem in uh, especially Australia. And so they do have it in this, vac in this vaccination this, y this year. So they think that that could actually be a good year for the uh, flu vaccine. But we really don't know. But we do expect a worse year than what we did last year. Now, worse year with the flu. With the flu. In, in other words, the flu is going to be stronger, harder, and make you sicker. Okay. So you said that was the H3 and N2. N2. Yes. It, it, people who actually get sicker with that have more problems. Now, when you're talking about the flu vaccine, uh, there's a, uh, basically they put in two uh, influenza A's and two influenza B's. Oh. So that's the, that's the, uh, the four stroke on that. They also have a three, but they do have those. And at this point, as they're doing the testing, it is actually showing up that there is a, uh, a strong correlation at this point with the particular flus that they that they they're thinking are hitting, mm -hmm. but uh, we don't really completely know yet. Okay. And uh, so the uh, H3N2 is the one that you don't want to get, and uh, unfortunately that was a really rather prevalent one. It is actually showing up in the United States at this point. So uh, just kind of buckle down, and if you're, uh, you know, as you're listening to this radio program, um, you know, as you get the flu uh, vaccination, but don't really just count on that. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big things that we f build a false sense of security. Well, I got the flu shot. vaccination. Mm -hmm. I got the flu shot, so I'm good. Well, last year it did you absolutely. They started out, oh, we're 80% really positive we get it mm -hmm. and they dropped it down to 60 percent then 40 percent then uh well we think we got it 20 percent at the end they said we didn't hit it at all mm -hmm. so it, it was a waste of time so really you need to be thinking about what are the preventative things that you can do to actually keep your immune system up uh, you know, the flu vaccination is one way to approach it, but if you're really tr serious about trying to prevent the flu, you need to take care of yourself. You need to do the things that, uh, you know, that are necessary. You need to uh, 
uh, take extra vitamins, uh, extra things that can actually pre uh, keep your immunity up because the only sure way of doing the best that you can is by keeping your immune system strong and that's where really a structure function doctor can come in and really help out. Mm -hmm. And that sleep is important. Sleep is important. Sleep. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, you know, making sure that you avoid crowds. Uh, the big thing out there is that flu is is it, somebody sneezes and you got a twenty five uh, of square foot yeah. area that you can catch it from. <laughs> right. So you know, just being ca cautious and all those things. So let's talk about that. Who is at risk? for the flu? The people who are at risk are the ones that are immunocompromised. Mm -hmm. So those people who have a weakened immune system are the ones who are most at risk. So anyone with any type of a chronic disease, autoimmune disease, anyone who has HIV, older people and children. Older people have a weakened immune system. Mm -hmm. uh, they're much more at risk. Children are more at risk. People who are obese are actually more at risk. Mm -hmm. So anyone who is not at their healthiest diabetes puts you more at risk. So all those different types of things are people who are more at risk, especially the people, majority, 90% of everyone who actually dies from the influenza with complications with pneumonia are 65 and older. Hmm. There haven't been any childhood deaths at this point, but children can also be at risk, especially if they have a weakened immune system, mm -hmm. more so than adults. So those are the people who are more at risk for the, the flu, and those are the ones who should be vaccinated for the flu as a priority. Those mm -hmm. would be the ones that they usually think about. How effective are flu medications? We talked about the you know vaccination. Sure. The two basic flu medications that they have out right now are the Relenza and the Tamiflu. And one of the things that can occur is that the viruses can actually become resistant to the medications also. Mm -hmm. Again, it's sort of a race here. You know, mm -hmm. who who's ahead and who's not? And we start hitting them with things and they're, they're actually very aware of it. They who's have there, those secret the, the, viruses? Those viruses, <laughs> yeah, the, the virus geniuses out there <laughs> who, who figure out how to kind of keep one step ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, the H3N2 Two. does still, still seem to be susceptible to those particular medications. However, you have to have those medications within the first 48 hours oh. of actually catching it. And interestingly, and how enough, do you know? <laughs> interestingly, the first day, uh -huh. you actually show no symptoms. Right. And so it would have to be a medication that you take, I mean, within the first day of showing symptoms. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, it's actually a waste of time. And, and there are side effects and dangers of getting both the vaccination and of getting the medications. What are those? Well, you can actually have some neurological types mm. of things that actually occur and, and there can be some immune reactions. So there are things that can actually occur on that. But I isn't have that Tamiflu commercial? I love it. That giant guy that tries to fit in a small house. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's how you feel, huh? Yeah, that, yeah, that that, but uh, at that point, field. you know, uh, where it, he is with the flu, I don't know if the Tamiflu would help. No, you, you have to hit it within the first 24 hours of showing symptoms, actually, mm -hmm. to make it effective. Otherwise, it's a waste of time, and you're actually having risk of other different types of things. All pharmaceuticals, if they don't have negative side effects, can't be classified as a pharmaceutical. Well, you just watch commercials. <laughs> <laughs> and you go through and all you, the <laughs> symptoms, yeah. you know. Uh, side effects. Side effects. So, you know, the people who are at risk, you have a compromised immune system. Uh, you have a tendency towards uh, upper respiratory lung infections. Mm -hmm. If you have asthma, keeping a close eye on that because, uh, again, you know, if you've had the vaccination, you are still highly at risk. And if you are at risk, you need to hit that with the medication within the first 24 hours of, of symptoms. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's something to keep in mind and, and something to be aware of. Well, let's talk about the approach of the structure function model that we do here on the flu. Certainly. As you're looking at the flu, there are two different types of ways to approach it. There is the disease care model, which is basically built on two different pillars. 
Number one is the vaccination, which is the main pillar. And then number two is the pharmaceuticals. Both of those, you know... You're talking about the flu. The, yeah. the flu, How you know, on, on really going after it. Mm-hmm. And both of those do have weaknesses. Mm-hmm. You know, one, it's not a guarantee, one, that the vaccination is actually a match. Mm-hmm. And then two, just because it is a match still doesn't mean that you won't get the flu. Mm-hmm. There is evidence that the reduction rate is, is not as significant as what we would hope for. Mm-hmm. And you then, hear that. People say, I got the... The flu vaccine. Anyway. I got the flu anyway. Now, I've never had the flu shot. I know you you never have. Right. And we've never had the flu. Sure. But um, because we, we approach it through the structure we function. We approach it through the structure function type of method where we're not really going after the virus itself. What we're doing is we're actually strengthening our own system. Because, you know, as one of the things we talk about is the people who are most at risk for the flu are those who are most susceptible. Mm -hmm. So what can Lower immune systems. Lowered immune system, have other different types of conditions going on, have uh, type 2 diabetes, are overweight, all sorts of different types of things that, that are occurring that causes a weakened immune system. So what is the way that you can approach this through a structure function is instead of concentrating on the flu, concentrating on the uh, individual, Mm -hmm. you know, and trying to get the individual healthy. Okay, when we come back, let's talk more about that, how we can best protect ourselves and our families from the flu. Listen to the Voice of Health Radio on your smartphone or tablet on all of the top radio apps available. Tune in Radio, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. You can find these apps and more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. Laughter is the best medicine. I went to one nutritionist. She said to me, the good news is you can have all the salads you want. Whew. That is good news. I was nervous. I came in here thinking, please, God, anything. Don't take away my salad. (laughs) She wanted me to have salad as the food. No. (laughs) Salad's not food. Salad comes with the food. (laughs) Salad is a promissory note that food will soon arrive. (laughs) If my brain sees a salad, it says, something good is going to happen soon. Wait right here. The Voice of Health Minute with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. Really controlling your levels of free radicals is one thing that is very, very helpful in preventing cancer. It's also something that's very important if you have cancer and then after cancer so it doesn't come back. Oftentimes, a lot of the treatments with chemo, radiation, produces a huge amount of free radical pathology. One of the things that I tell people is that as we measure them and find the high levels after their cancer, a lot of that is actually created by the treatments themselves. So we need to get that down, get that under control. That will cut down on your likelihood of getting cancer. Cancer again. Right. So the treatments like chemo or radiation can cause more free radicals. And then actually set you up for getting cancer again. So looking at those types of things are really important, making sure those free radicals are under control. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. Are you frustrated by not getting to the root cause of your health issue? Are you tired of not knowing why you're always fatigued? Are you wanting to say no to toxic drugs? Have you lost hope? Are you just tired of being sick and tired? At the Prather Practice, we want you to know that we have the answers for you. We offer the alternative to the disease care model. We are the drug-free model to health and wellness. At the Prather Practice, we look for the underlying cause of your health problem and not just the symptomatology. Through thorough diagnostics, we find your individual health blueprint for your treatment. Where the disease care model is symptom-based, the structure function model we practice gets to the root of your health issue. The Prather Practice is the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. Our integrated practice offers you the most treatment options to restore your health and your hope. Learn more about the Prather Practice by calling 317-848-8048 or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. I'm 
Lisa Prather, and you're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where we get to the root cause of your health issue. So we're talking about the flu. So let's talk about how we can best protect ourselves and our family and friends. we got to include friends, too, and, <laughs> and strangers. And <laughs> <laughs> People hey, you all the over street. the world <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from the flu. <laughs> we can stand on street corners and say, hey, are you protected against the flu? <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that is most important in, is to actually have some good blood tests. Mm. You know, find out what your health is. Yeah. A lot of people who are coming in here have no idea that they have a weakened immune system, uh, severely compromised, unless they have tested. And, you know, it's before the end of the year. A lot of people have reached their deductible. Certainly. Come in and get a thorough blood work. A lot of people are doing that right now. Right. Probably the the best test on that, of course, is the white blood cells, but specifically the absolute lymphocytes is what we're looking for. Okay. And it's amazing how many people have a, a weakened immune system on their absolute lymphocytes. And, and if they have that at the low levels that they're dealing with, then they are very susceptible to the flu. What are absolute lymphocytes? It, the lymphocytes are the portion of the, the white blood cells, the immune system or protectors, that actually goes after the viruses. Okay. And I'm not going to get into the whole complication of, of everything, but we can actually do testing on the immune system to see how the body's ability is to actually handle a viral infection. Mm -hmm. And we have people who come in who think that they're very healthy and and their ability to actually fight the viruses is extremely low. Just like they can find out exactly which virus is going on, we can find out exactly whether your ability to fight the influenza is high or low. Wow. Uh, so from be, the blood yeah, test. From that blood test. From the blood test. So we can check out the kids who are susceptible, people who are 65 and older, mm-hmm. and we can change the levels of that. Mm-hmm. There are very definite types of ways to treat people nutritionally, herbally, homeopathically that can go into where we see the changes in the blood work. So it's something that's, that's very definite, something very provable, mm-hmm. and something that can be rechecked and, and see what's going on. Well, and that's what I like about what we do, too. It'd be very individual. You know, we don't pass out the same herbal for everybody that has a low immune system. Certainly. Different people have different requirements on those areas and different types of responses. Mm -hmm. So not everyone. It's just like how people get the vaccination. Some people do very well with it. It improves, you know, their ability to fight the infection. Whereas some people will have, I had a gentleman who came in who got the uh, flu shot. And his left arm was paralyzed mm. where he, he got it. He'd come in after a year, still was unable to use his arm. And we were able to get that completely reversed. Mm. It made a huge difference for him. But mm-hmm. that's a very common type of thing. And we get a lot of people who have reactions to the flu vaccination who we can actually treat and be able to get them over those. Mm-hmm. So different people have different responses. You know, Mm -hmm. there isn't just a standard type of response. We're not all the same. Not all the same. So there are ways that as we evaluate people on what is going to be the best approach to get their immune system up, to get their system working right. One of the things that's extremely important also, uh, not just the immune system, but the strength of the cell wall. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because the more intact and stronger the cell wall is, the harder it is for the virus to penetrate it to be able to get into the cell to actually start replicating. It's like a fort, right? It's like a fort, and the cell wall is made up of cholesterol. Mm. So, you know, and there are... And there are a lot of low cholesterol-lowering drugs. If you, yes, if you start getting your cholesterol below 150 and maintain that, your susceptibility to the influenza goes right through the roof. Hmm. So a lower cholesterol level, anything below 150, uh, means that you are dramatically 
uh, more susceptible to the flu virus than mm. you otherwise Because your cell would. wall isn't, isn't your as fort intact. isn't as strong and right. protected. We also have monolaurin, which is a supplement we give to people, which also helps to strengthen the cell wall. So there are ways to help with the, the viruses. There's the immune system portion. There's the strength of the cell wall. There's the ability of the body to drain the lymphatic tissue. Mm. In other words, there's a lot of different types of factors on this that go into helping someone to, one, prevent getting the flu, and then also, if they actually get it, how to get them over it quickly. Well, let's talk about that. How do you work with the immune system? Well, there are a lot of different types of approaches. One of the ways to strengthen the ability of the immune system is actually looking to the gut. Mm. They have been doing a tremendous amount of research on the gut and the immune system. Mm -hmm. The Biogenome Research Project, which was actually funded by the National Institute of Health, associated with the Center of Disease Control, and they found that the gut plays probably the most critical portion of the ability of the body to keep the immune system up. So one of the things that we do is we have different types of whey products. There's colostrum that we can give that can stimulate the body's ability to develop a good, strong immune system. Colostrum, which is in breast milk. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's the first milk that comes in. That's what a a mom gives the baby to jumpstart their immune system. Yeah. And ours is in pill form. And ours is actually in pill form. I don't want to think people think that's not <laughs> breast milk. But of course, you know, we get it from specialized cattle right. that can actually, we can actually utilize and really does make a, an immediate difference in, mm-hmm. in people's immune system. So looking to the gut, clearing out infections, not only do we do careful analysis of the blood, but we also do a careful analysis of the gut to find out uh, what's going on with the immune system. The other influences on that are the copper-zinc ratio. Mm -hmm. Uh, We find that out from the hair analysis, which can play a very, very huge impact on the immune system. So, you know... Why is that? Because I know that's an issue with me. Right, you know, because of the the copper. The the copper-zinc ratio is absolutely critical for the immune system. If you shift in different ways, if you're balanced your ability to fight both bacteria and uh, viruses is intact. Mm -hmm. If you get out of balance, then you have more of a susceptibility to bacteria. If you go the other way, you have more susceptibility to viruses. It's all about homeostasis. It's all about homeostasis, and that's really what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And we are, as a structure function office, actually more dependent upon lab tests than the disease care model Mm -hmm. because we are looking for the balance in the system and as we can achieve the balance then we have homeostasis and homeostasis is the definition of health and the more you are in a homeostasis the more your ability to fight off viruses and bacteria just goes right through the roof Mm. well tell me about elderberry syrup i've been seeing that go out we just (laughs) just (laughs) stocked our shelves even (laughs) well the the elderberry has been used for uh, literally thousands of years. It was something that the Roman physicians... So do you think it's effective? <laughs> <laughs> the Roman physicians uh, were, were prescribing it way back when, and, and they actually used it for the flu. It is a immune stimulator and also excellent for draining out the lymphatic tissue. Like echinacea, people always know, well, I'm taking echinacea because I think I've got a virus. Mm -hmm. The echinacea does nothing for the virus itself. What it does is it's great for keeping the lymphatic system flowing. The echinacea. The Mm -hmm. echinacea, that's one of the things. And the elderberry actually has an immune stimulator, and it also helps with the drainage of the lymphatic tissue. Interesting. Well, when we come back, let's talk more about herbals and how they can help in homeopathics. Never miss an episode of The Voice of Health so that you can stay informed and empowered about your health. Get a podcast of our show automatically delivered to you every week by signing up for our show on iTunes. You can find that link on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. And don't forget, thevoiceofhealthradio.com has complete archives of all of our past episodes with an audio library of information to help you add more life to your years and more years to your life. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. 
The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. Body composition analysis, one of our diagnostic tools that we do on every new patient. Definitely one of my favorites. What is body composition analysis? What is your body made of? So doing a nice analysis along those lines just to see how the whole body is kind of put together, you know, divides you up into the different areas. Patients are like, you got all that information from that quick little test. They're kind of blown away. But it gives me a real good handle on where we are with the patient, where we need to go right at the beginning. We get that before I actually even see the patient. That way I can go in, know what I'm expecting, what kind of state of health the person is in, and really gets me geared to what the patient is going to need. Why is it important? It really tells me the total situation of where your health is. We're going to find out the particulars. What is the physiology? What are the structural changes? You know, the structure function aspect. But this kind of gives you a grade. The body composition analysis tells me exactly where we are before we even begin. Is it difficult to do? From bringing in the machine to getting done, it takes about five minutes. And it's just a little sticky on your ankle and your and You your have to lay wrist. down. Yeah, you have to lay down. <laughs> you know, life is tough. <laughs> It's a very, very easy, quick, definitely non-painful, yep, which is always it. great. It's a really uh, great little test, and uh, people like to have that to be done and see how they're improving. Talk about the accuracy. The accuracy on the BCA for most things is, is within 2%. It is used in research. So it is a research quality instrument. There are gold standard diagnostics that's basically proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. This is one of the gold standards for diagnostics. What is measured? To calculate your BMI. Body mass index. Body mass index. The percentages of your water, fat, bone, muscle, and divides that all up. And then it also does something called a phase angle. The phase angle is the electrical current around the cells. It really does a, an amazing job. You know, when it says body composition analysis, I completely know the basic makeup of your body. So the BMI, body mass index, body fat percentage, right? Your water, how well your water is moving between the cells. Is yes, that it? intracellular, and the cells. extracellular, and then the total water percentage of your body. And then the phase angle. Which is phase angle, very and important. then also your bone and muscle makeup. And is it expensive? It's free. <laughs> it's free. Free coming That's into our office. <laughs> Every new patient gets that and gets all that information. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. Birth the angels sing, come adore on bend knee, Christ the Lord, the new born King. You're listening to the Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice, where our mission is restoring hope to our patients. talking today about the flu, tis the season of the flu. We're talking about treatment. We talked about um, the disease care model, um, the vaccination, pharmaceuticals is how it's treated. We're talking now about the structure function approach mm-hmm. to the flu. And I like how you divide it up. You talked about we focus on strengthening the immune system. Mm-hmm. Strengthening the cell wall, which is very interesting what you talked about there. And then draining the lymph system, correct? Keeping correct. the lymph system moving. Absolutely. Uh, th- those are different areas that you're looking at that can play a big role on, one, whether you actually get the flu, and then, two, if the flu turns into something more serious. The problem, people don't actually die from the influenza. It's usually pneumonia. Yeah, it's usually pneumonia. It's the secondary bacterial infections that uh, mm-hmm. actually become the major problem. So even if you have the, the flu, if you can keep the lymphatic system draining because it's a backup of the lymph system that makes the opportunity for the bacteria to actually accumulate, mm-hmm. then you're not going to get the secondary bacterial infection. And once you're through with the flu, then you're good to go. Mm-hmm. So that's a big area to look at. So not only do you want to try to prevent getting the flu, but if you have it, what do you do at that point? 
And that's one of the things that we encourage people to come in, trying to keep them away from everybody else, but also to get the proper things that they need to actually be able to treat themselves so that they can get over it quickly. I liked your emphasis on lab work and diagnostics and what you can find out from that. And we were talking about being the end of the year and people have reached their deductible. This is a good overall checkup to sure. see. And it's a very smart idea just to find out where you are health-wise because people don't know. I've had many of people who came in who thought that they were extremely healthy, mm-hmm. and we found serious problems. Mm-hmm. So, you know, unless you... Those um, are the people that say, oh, I was so healthy, or Fred's so healthy, what happened? You right, know, right. got cancer, or, you know, and... Yeah, and something people, happened all of a sudden, and, and pe- things just don't happen. Right. There's always a reason, there's always signs, there's always ways if you're actually having good diagnostic tests, having the proper examinations, those things are going to show up. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, things do, don't just happen. Mm-hmm. And there's always long-term warning signs beforehand if you're willing to take the time to actually look at those. Yeah, and extensive blood work like we do should be done once a year. At, at least. least as a minimum. And that's a recommendation I mean, by not just by me, but by every reputable hospital and, and uh, organization and medical college in the world. I mean, we take our cars and they put them on a diagnostic test. Have you seen sure. their reports they give back? They're better than <laughs> <laughs> health care report. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> Oftentimes we take better care of our cars than we do yeah, ourselves. Right. They have us on a regime and, you know, you get your oil change at this point. And you're right. Certainly. Right. Certainly. So we were talking about then treating it. It was real interesting. You talked about the colostrum and, and the gut, so important, the whey protein. You know, what we put in our body. I mean, I can tell when I'm not eating sure. as well. And one of the things is, is high sugar you eat improperly. Yeah. It does weaken the immune system. You you will see definite immediate changes. So that you're, you know, the way that you, you know, just common sense. What are mm-hmm. the common sense types of things that you can do to actually prevent the flu? Mm-hmm. Well, you got to take care of yourself. Sleep. You got to get proper sleep. sleep. You mm-hmm. can't wear yourself out. You can't eat like Dunkin' Donuts every day (laughs) and expect to be Mm -hmm. able to fight off the flu when it comes around. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to eat properly. You've got to sleep well. You Stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fluid levels actually makes a very big difference on our health and Mm well-being. Having the proper checks, making sure that uh, trying to keep our stress levels down. Because stress will actually Good cause luck that. with that around the holidays. <laughs> 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 I was um, managing some people at my house, putting up Christmas lights. Oh, my goodness. I got those ones that were kind of bluish. They're supposed to be white. What's cool white? It's blue. <laughs> but anyway, go on, Dr. Priya. All right, right. You didn't, you didn't get stressed <laughs> over my, that, did you? Yeah, it's my biggest stress over the holidays, putting those now, careful. lights up. <laughs> 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 so uh, watching out for all those types of things. So, you know, those are all very important types of aspects uh, of getting the flu. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you get the flu, what do you do at that point? Uh, one of the interesting things is during the Spanish influenza during 1918, they kept statistics. And at that time, they actually had homeopathic hospitals. Mm-hmm. And the homeopathic hospitals had less than a 10% death rate from the influenza, whereas the uh, disease care, the uh, medical Mm -hmm. hospitals, had an over 90% death rate. So I'm wondering, where are the homeopathic hospitals? Well, (laughs) Where have they gone? (laughs) They've all been bought up, (laughs) Uh and uh, they went by the wayside. But homeopathic is something that once you have the flu, you know, because if you've gone over 24 hours, there is the old standard combination of remedies that is still available that was so effective during the 1918 flu epidemic. Mm -hmm. And the patients that we have, that because we have that here, and people who take it find that their flu goes away much, much quicker mm. with much fewer symptoms. Right, and there's so, no side effects. And there's absolutely no chance of any type of side effects. Mm-hmm. So it's a very effective means of getting the symptomatology down. Mm-hmm. So we do have flu be gone, mm-hmm. is what it's called. Uh-huh. 
and be gone. And it that's is, a homeopathic. It is homeopathic. No side effects. It either works or it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. But the evidence on that is really quite dramatic on cutting down on the symptomatology and on cutting down the length of time of actually having the flu. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I would recommend that everybody have on their shelf as one of their medications, especially during uh, this flu season. Mm -hmm. So if they do get it, uh, start taking that, and they will find a, uh, a very sharp reduction. All the patients who've gotten the flu who took that so that they could tell, they could actually feel a difference almost right. immediately. Mm -hmm. on their symptomatology. And that's flu be gone. Flu be gone. Yeah. I had a, uh, a wife who came in who had that. Everybody got the flu. She and her daughter were the ones who took it. Everybody else said no. And uh, they were over it in uh, two to three days, and everybody else had it about eight, nine. See, those women are so wise. <laughs> Right? <laughs> and the husband said, next time I'm taking the flu, we has got to prove it to them. <laughs> so th that, is, that is an excellent way. There, there are a ton of herbals that are also very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Again, during the Spanish flu, Lomatium dissecutum. It was a herbal that the Indians had, mm -hmm. along with uh, several other different, but that was the main herb. But they also, the Indians who actually took that, and then they actually started to sell that to the whites, mm -hmm. uh, and the doctors who were, who were doing it saw a vast improvement with that. So that is also another herbal that what is What is helpful. that again? Lomatium dissecutum. Okay. And that's an herb that has been researched and evaluated as a good flu medicine. Mm -hmm. Olive leaf is excellent, astragalus, eucalyptus, echinacea is very helpful for draining out the lymphatic system. So there is a whole ton. Uh, we probably have about 100 different uh, herbals mm -hmm. in our system that we can actually look at that can be helpful for getting over the flu. So, you and know, there's a lot of variety. we can check them individually. We can actually yeah. check them individually to see how they're going to work. So besides the homeopathics, we have herbals. Obviously, vitamins and minerals can play a very big role. One of the things that if you're low on zinc, your ability to fight viruses is particularly weak. And that shows up on a hair analysis. That shows up on a hair analysis. So oftentimes you can actually take some zinc and see some immediate differences on your infection. What about spongitis? I'm, I've been seeing that um Excellent. That's a, that's a homeopathic and uh, it, it, cough is, syrup -like? it is an amazing cough syrup. One of the things is that a lot of the cough syrups really shouldn't be given to children. There is a, a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of death rates that occur on that. They have pretty well said that the cough syrup should not be used in children. However, spongitis is absolutely safe, effective, extremely effective. It is also something that every household should have some spongitis in there mm -hmm. because uh, what you do is you take a, a teaspoon every hour until the cough stops, and it's actually a very short amount of time. Uh -huh. So what it does is it actually stimulates the cilia in the lungs so that you can actually bring it up and get rid of whatever might be accumulating. So spongitis, especially for older people who have a, if they get the flu, Mm -hmm. with a cough, with a buildup of the mucus as a breeding ground for bacteria. If they can take the spongitis, that would really keep them from actually getting the pneumonia. Mm. So, uh, again, another can excellent type of way. sell that here, yeah. And absolutely safe. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you have your two-year-old all of a sudden drink the entire bottle of the spongitis, they're mm -hmm. going to burp, but that's about it. <laughs> uh, and uh, if they drink the whole bottle of uh, cough syrup, you have to rush them to the hospital. They may not make it. Mm -hmm. So... It's a very dramatic difference between the toxicity level right. of the products. Well, what other treatments are effective? Chiropractic, acupuncture, auricular, diathermy. We have a ton of different types of things that are extremely mm -hmm. helpful. The patients who actually get regular chiropractic and acupuncture care uh, just don't get sick as often. Mm -hmm. As you can control and bring the body back into homeostasis, no matter what way you actually do it, you are actually bringing the ability of the body to fight off whatever. Mm -hmm. So looking at the homeostasis, bringing it back into into its normal balance, just makes sense. Yeah, this this mm -hmm. isn't something that's that's voodoo or or you know not understandable. It actually makes more sense than the disease care model. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you, Dr. Prather, as always. And I want to let our listeners know it is getting close to the end of the year, and if you've met your deductible, most insurances do cover the blood work. It's a good time before the flu season hits, um, you know, to get the blood work checked. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Prather. The Prather Practice is located at 8902 North Meridian Street on the north side of Indianapolis, just south of the I-465 loop. If we can help you to achieve better health, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with our office at 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Join us again here next week or anytime on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com for The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather.